everybody. Welcome. So glad that you're here with us today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I'd like to uh, welcome everybody who's with us in person to Talks on Tuesdays. I'm Barbara Solomon. I'm here with Chelsea Richens and Mary Chase and Christine, Renee, Nancy Chase, Gordy, and Anna Lee. So I'm so glad you guys are with us. And welcome to everybody who's watching us on YouTube later. So just to let everyone know, we're recording and we'll post it on, on YouTube later. I know um, Gino said he couldn't join us today. So I said, okay, we'll go watch the video. So, um, so glad that you're all here. And this is a place where we can just talk about all sorts of just different metaphysical type things in a safe and friendly environment. And actually, before we get started, though, I'd just like to everyone to just take a moment. Hi, Emily. You're here. You made it. Yeah. I'd like everyone to just take a moment and just kind of do a little deep breathe and get centered. Just kind of drop down into your heart space, <sighs> open up your awareness that we are infinite, we are connected, we are one. We are. And thanks everybody. So we have about uh, 30 minutes to just talk and uh, just bring to to the forefront whatever's on your mind. I was reading uh, the Direct Path to Healing the other day, and I came across uh, this quote that I'll just read quickly. It's I have it in the oh we have one more person. I have it in the uh, little flyer for the meeting today. When there is no more separation between this and that, it's called the still point of the Tao. At the still point in the center of the circle, one can see the infinite in all things. And I just love that. Sometimes it's hard to, I feel kind of separated from it. Sometimes I feel more associated with it, but sometimes I feel a little bit more separated, but I thought we'd talk about that today. So anybody want to get started? I'll, I'll start. I guess. Sure, go ahead, Christine. I found it interesting and, and funny at the same time. I've been reading this book this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Okay. That's like, oh, okay. okay. Um, one of the things that I struggle with and I know that we are all one, but I have triggers and it's usually from religious people from my past religion who say things and it just sets me off. And I'm try trying to process, well, why is that? What is the trigger there? They're just living their life to the best of their abilities. Why is it triggering me? You know, um, maybe I'm afraid of being wrong and maybe they have it right or maybe I want to set them straight because I feel like I have it right. But when you look at the big picture and we're all one, we're all just trying to get to the same place, right? And I think we're all there anyway, especially when we look at the energy of love and the vibration of that and that the higher consciousness. And I think we're the, if, if I get out of my state of fear and I live in that state of love, it's going to bring us all together in that higher state of consciousness that's what's going to happen so um yeah that's my my two cents on that <laughs> oh, and that's beautiful wow i love that thank you so so um getting back to what's triggering you do you have any thoughts on that or should we just kind of move on to to yeah. because i like that perspective of the higher vibration and the higher state i think to some extent there's uh, there's a few things. First of all, I think it's fear that what if I am wrong in my thinking? Cause I've changed a lot of my thinking, but I, my instinct says, no, I'm not wrong. My fear is that they're not walking the, 
the path. So I want to, you know, set everybody straight and just not, again, there's really no, no separation though. If we're looking at it as we are all one, we are all on that path and we're just taking different ways to get there. And then I also envy their ability to just trust completely in this because they, I've gone to a more scientific way of my, my approach. <laughs> so, so when, you know, the, the whole blind faith kind of thing just doesn't settle well with me anymore. Um, <laughs> yet I envy them for that <laughs> at the same time. So I, it would be nice, you know, to, um, be in a state where you can just fully trust the unseen. And I think, I think there is a place for that. I'm just not completely there yet because I, I don't want to be uh, missing the, the mark, I guess, or be, take, I don't want to be manipulated anymore. That's really what it comes down to. I don't want to be manipulated anymore. So that's where. Yeah. Yeah. And when we sense manipulation, we see it as an attack. Yes. And our defenses go up. And I think that's what is triggered. Thank and, you. And, and I, I think what has helped me enormously is to just realize that a lot of people who trigger me still believe in a vengeful God. Mm -hmm. And because they believe that, it carries a lot of, we'll say, ammunition for them. Like, you're going to hell. I'm worried that you're going to go to hell. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to worry you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, you know, we're, we're all where we are. And we are all at the still point. But we are also, it, it's like a mirror ball. We, we appear to be separate and it's that appearance of separation that um, prompts us to be defensive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Right. I think we're coming from two, like the still point is one point, but whenever, whenever we're coming from the thinking mind, it's it's a different point and i i think it was i've heard it from a few different places but i think i definitely heard it in a rupert spira book that anything you think you know with your thinking mind you can probably come to the point where any anything you think you know with the thinking mind is probably wrong and I, sometimes I interpret that as whatever we think we know with the thinking mind is probably not 100% correct. It's when we step back and just go into the heart. Yeah. Be, there's just so much baggage we carry whenever it is of the thinking mind that we try to have our faith or our knowing from. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I think I think if we all just walked around brain centered, we'd pretty much all be going in different directions. It's when we step back and give up the hundred percent. And I don't know. I, I really, I really feel for your investigation, and 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 I'm proud of you, Christine, for Thank contemplating you. and and moving in in these directions that you're going. Thank you. And I, I see myself talking to, you know, maybe somebody I have in my, my, in my life who, who doesn't really want to entertain what I have to say or what I do in my spare time, you know, because it's too woo woo, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think many of us are there. You're right. Mm -hmm. And yet, and I love, I love this discussion this morning, but one thing that I heard you say, Christine, that resonates a little differently with me is that your belief in that blind faith, or you're willing to just kind of accept without any proof. 
And um, I actually feel I do have blind faith and I am willing to accept, but it's something different than what I think you're talking about. You know, that, that there's this old man in the sky who's looking down on us and kind of controlling us. You know, that's the God I was raised with also. But it's, but my, my blind trust and my faith is really more in, in me and what I was reading about as far as like that, that infinite, that infinite knowing and um, just believing that the universe is here to support me yes. and, you know, just allowing it. And yes. that is, I find that so comforting. Yeah. And I yeah. think that this sense of knowingness we all have when we know without evidence, we just know it is its own evidence. Yeah. That feeling comes from somewhere. Yes. It's, it's just as valid as two chemicals having a reaction in a pair of test tubes. Maybe that's our glimpse of the infinite. <laughs> yes, I agree. I just yesterday was thinking about the instinct and intuition. And I think instinct is the gut knowing and the intuition is the gut feeling and the faith comes with the action on either of the intuition or the instinct taking action on those because it's it's a higher conscious of of knowing that instinct or that gut feeling and then when we do something with it that's what i think is the the faith behind it yeah maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah it's the living of the knowledge yes yeah, that that is the act of faith. Yeah, even can't express word because it's a higher conscious kind of knowing. We might not be able to put it into words, but if we're taking action on it, then that would be faith. So yeah. maybe you know, randomly just out here thinking about things. <laughs> yeah, right. Or allowing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and this morning I opened Solomon speaks, uh, and thought that I'd just see what came up there. And uh, th I just love this sentence or this, this little phrase, your life is that which is. Acknowledge that and all else will come through you. You're a part of the universe. It will flow through you. Let it be at that. And that's kind of what you were talking about, Christine. You know, just that that knowing and that faith allow just allowing yeah yeah so i'm just curious this is nancy, Hi, nancy. Um, how you know the gut knowing i'm sure there are many a cult follower and a nazi follower and a different political entities who that you know the gut knowing without examination of why it appeals to you or is it coming out of fear or where is it coming from so yeah so if like in i've had premonitions what would a premonition be like someone was going to break into my house and i had a premonition about that what would is that an instinct or is that an intuition or are you psychic yeah are you asking a question what do you think christine I, I don't I don't know. And the, then the psychic thing is is having psychic uh I don't know is is that intuition or is that instinct or is it a set of its own? That's a really good question. Um and and I would think that, that one of the things we were gonna talk about is this kind of this whole non-locality phenomenon. And you know, maybe that's exactly what that is our connection to all that is, our connection to everything and our allowing ourselves to be open to those types of things, mm -hmm. you know, open to, uh, you know, I mean, there's been people who had a loved one who 
passed away and the person woke up and saw them, you know, in the night and they had a little conversation or the person said goodbye and then they found out the next morning, oh, grandpa just died that night or, you know, I mean, there's all these different types of phenomenon that happen that are what we would consider non-local because, it, you know, that person's like not right in front of us. So you're knowing, okay, oh, someone's going to break into my house or there's some weird thing I better lock up extra carefully tonight. It, it, I guess in some ways it is almost instinctual because I think, it, and this is just my opinion, but I think it comes from kind of the ethers, you know, yeah. and it, so it seems like it's bigger than just this physical me, I, small I. Yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because so many of us have premonitions and they're not right all the time. Um, but it seems like, um, a lot of times premonitions are come in answer to fear. Oh, this might happen or this could happen. And I, I want to get back to Nancy for a minute. I think she left, but her, um, her question like, oh, I know this is the right candidate. I know this is the right political party. This is the right movement is also about personal gain, like, oh, these are my people, and now I will have friends who think the same as I do. But with, with the spiritual knowing, um, I think there is no logical explanation of why you feel that way. Right. Um, and so that's, I don't know if that's a complete answer, but it's part of it. That, you know, do I, who benefits? And with, like, when I went to Reconnective Healing, I mean, I, I couldn't say that it was going to make me any more popular or richer or anything else. I, it was just that I knew that was what I needed to do. Exactly. I felt I felt that as well for myself. And most of my premonitions have actually been warnings that came to to be. So yeah. well, you're, you may be more connected than I am. It could be I have more fear around my dog's going to get out. I better. <laughs> Do X, Y, Z. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I love these conversations though, because it kind of, you know, opens up the the heart and the, the mind at the same time. And thank you guys so much for this conversation. Yeah. 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 It it is so fascinating that um this morning I took my cat into the vet for his annual exam. And I had to reschedule it twice because he would somehow seemed to know ah, time to go hide under the bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, yeah. this morning we were very careful and had him up and I was brushing him and, and, you know, our usual morning routine. And then Dean came over and just kind of, or I think Dean was brushing him and then swooped down and, and he was so unhappy, but he seems to just <laughs> have this knowing this mm -hmm. you know, little antenna that's up that he can connect up and say, uh oh. So, you know, and I just love that because I think, and, and um, I heard a, a presentation by this guy whose name was James McGonagall. Pretty sure it was McGonagall. Maybe it was McDougall. Some Scottish sounding guy. He, and he worked with the CIA on their remote viewing project, you know, back in the, in the 60s. And he was very astute at it. And he was talking about how everybody has the ability, but of course, not everybody is open to it or realizes it or understands it. But um, it, it's just knowing, knowing that we can do this. Um, and then for me, being involved with Reconnective Healing sessions, which everybody here knows what Reconnective Healing is. Some people who might be watching later may not, but it's a type of energy manipulation or playing with the frequencies. And it helps us to um, become aware of that, that um, connection with all that is. And um, last year, actually just a little over a year ago, Mary and I went to Paris and saw some Reconnective Healing uh, buddies of ours. And, and then we went on to Tuscany and had a, went to a wonderful retreat and workshop there. And during that trip, I really, began to feel in my being, 
um, that connectedness, that oneness. In the past, I'd have like a few experiences here or there, they were random. But, but since then, I've really had more of a knowing that part of my like clothing almost of this body of that oneness and connectedness with every, everything and everybody. And um, it's, it's enlightening, you know, it's, it's eye opening because it makes me look at things really differently. And, you know, I, I still um, get irritated with people, <laughs> but, but it, it's a, it, it's a different type. You know, I have, I'm more able to um, step back and, and realize that this is, just the finite me and, and it's not, there's so much more, you know, there's so much bigger. So, so, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. To connect it all back, you know, when we can let go of the fear and the judgment mm -hmm. and as, as Barbara was talking, I was thinking about, you know, sitting with my daughter and bringing up reconnective healing and how and and she just in a few sentences says you know I don't really want to go there no thank you and but there's me sitting there but I can I also have I have a foundation where even in that conversation and I'm being shut down and my ego is kind of being hurt I know that she is me and then I kind of settle in and I look and I just think, thank you for playing this part in my life. You're, you're a big teacher for me. And I know we come from two different point of views, but something brings me back that I'm sitting there with a, like she, we are one, but at the same time, she's a gift to me. Yeah. Playing that little part of mm -hmm. challenging me. But I, like Barbara, can go back to that base and know we are one. And then stuff like that, those ego feelings feel less. They feel less to me. And uh, I can just, it, it's kind of like, just being a leaf on a leaf leaf on a river just floating and you might come into a bunch of other leaves or whatever but you're just going with the flow yeah yeah then yeah. hi to gordy at work <laughs> too bad you can't jump on and say hi but thanks for being here sort of add a little bit of spice to the pot <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I don't. I don't sort of disagree with with the one consciousness. I do feel, and I know that that is the truth. We are one consciousness. We are one presence. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to share your belief, or I have to share your perspective, mm -hmm. or I have to be convinced or coerced or have someone attempt to bring me onto their side because they don't want to feel alone with whatever it is. So I sort of make that distinction because I think it's an important one where I have every right and freedom to feel, believe, think, whatever I do. And I don't have the right to have the expectation that someone else is going to want to join me for any particular reason, only for the only for the fact that uh, I sometimes know perhaps that someone might see a brighter view if they did, if they did at least open their mind up enough to hear me, but there is a lot of resistance that you can't necessarily break through or reach because people are not willing to be open or to, to really take in your point of view. They're either, you know, so, unfamiliar with whatever it is that you're speaking about it makes them very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and some people like their misery more than they like joy so whatever one thing i learned when i was in my 20s uh 
as someone who attended a 12-step program for families of alcoholics. And there's a bunch of slogans that are very popular. And one of them is, uh, you know, live and let live. Um, take what you liked and leave the rest. So listen, try to keep an open mind. That was another one. And I was 20 years old when I was hearing all of these, what I called nuggets of wisdom. And I still carry some of them with me in my memory because I think they're incredibly valuable. Simple, really keep it simple. There's another one, but very, very valued little nuggets of wisdom that uh, can really serve you well anywhere, anytime. So that's basically my perspective that, uh, you know, my perspective is based on everything I've experienced in my life. And I don't expect anybody else's to look like mine, to feel like mine. I clearly don't expect anyone to understand where I might be in a particular time in my life or why I feel that way. And I'm absolutely totally entitled to whatever it is that I feel. And yeah. so is everybody else. So it all makes us better human beings because Yes, we are of one consciousness, but uh, we all don't take the same path. Right. And oh, we yeah, all... we're totally individual facets of one right. consciousness. Right. We're not and alone to say that language. I think our power, our power lies in love and compassion, not in argumentation. Yeah, I would add to that, too, because we're all one consciousness, but separate in being. Mm -hmm. And if careful we could get into a codependency and enmeshment mindset where we're forcing everybody to think the same way which then becomes just another religion so we yeah and boring too <laughs> you know having all these varieties keeps life so interesting so. what's to talk about thanks everybody for joining us today i'm so grateful that you're here Louis mm -hmm. Teresa from South Africa, thank you. And Anne-Louis from outside of Seattle. And, and the rest of you who help make this a lovely half hour discussion. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week.